Hi, this is your host Swapnil Bharti and welcome to another episode of TFR Insights. And today we are going to talk about the business side of infrastructure as code. And today we have with us once again, Rob Hirschfeld to talk about this topic. Rob, first of all, it's great to have you back on the show. I was always excited. Thanks. And this is a great topic. Very important. I also see that there is a lot of work going on in the cloud 2030 uh, space. So before we get into this topic, any anything new you have to share about uh, cloud 2030? <laughs> cloud 2030 will blow your mind. We are literally going through and opening up the covers on the tech. Actually, the infrastructure as code business side is part of the, the thinking here. And we're thinking about who is making money, who has the controls, what could change, what could disrupt the whole market. Um, it's incredibly powerful technology discussions. And so um, I strongly encourage people to check that out. It's a big deal. Of course. Yep. So let's talk about uh, uh, about infrastructure as code. I was reading a lot of stuff. I, I was watching a lot of stuff that you have to say. And you compare infrastructure as code with kind of flow manufacturing. So first of all, what is flow manufacturing and why do you think, why do you draw a parallel between these two? Yeah, it's, it's really important. So flow manufacturing is something that's been around for a long time. And I, and I have an industrial engineering background. So it's it, to me, it's important to look toward these established manufacturing techniques and see how they apply into the, our technologies. And they, they usually have very good fit because it's really about how do we have repeatable results Flow manufacturing is, you know, some people would think of lean or just-in-time manufacturing as very common terms. The idea here is that I've created a input-output stream that is very predictable, that works in small units, uh, that I can make quick changes to and adapt to how my outputs go. Uh, and so that is exactly what we're talking about for infrastructure as code, right? The goal here is that everything I do from a technology organization, I have code-like control. So I start from a source code repository, then I have an automated chain that delivers that technology into the field or into people's hands. It's exactly what flow manufacturing is trying to do. It's shortening that time from an idea and concept to an idea in delivery um, and eliminating all of the bottlenecks um, that would normally stand in the way of that process. Since you're comparing with manufacturing, and if you look at manufacturing, you have complete visibility over what is going on in your factory. Uh, there is transparency. When we look at our modern infrastructure, how much transparency is there? Do we know what is going on in there? Because knowing what is going on in there is important for a lot of reasons. Number one is you can repeat if you know what is being done. It can get audited. And for security reasons, most importantly, you should know uh, what is going on there. So tell me how, how tra transparent our modern infrastructure are and how does infrastructure as a code enables transparency? Or um, it, let's start with the importance of transparency. So transparency is absolutely essential. Uh, because if if you have any breakdowns between you know deliver in your process of delivering product and you don't know what's happening why it's happening somebody's somebody's fixing something and factories are not 100% observed right so you could have a case where somebody's doing hand uh, hand tooling to fix a part or they're manufacturing something by hand or they're 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 interfering with their your process in the ways you wanted or ways that you didn't want all those things you don't really know what's going on uh, technology is the same thing. So if you have places where a person is configuring a server or fixing something or going in behind the scenes and tweaking a, a result to make sure that it complies, those gaps create um, uh, hard to repeat or impossible to repeat results. Um, and then that means that everything that you're trying to do behind that becomes much harder. Um, so transparency is important because you want to be able to know exactly what happened at every step of the way. And that also ties into repeatability because what you want to be certain of is that if you ask for something to be done, it's done the same way over and over again. Um, too much we've seen, and we see this in customer scenarios all the time where they buy new servers or infrastructure and then they have people run around and fix it and flash it and put it into the right conformance and wire it up. And any mistakes that people make create problems. And it's so time consuming and hard that when they fix those mistakes, nobody wants to ask them to repeat the process. 
And a big thing about infrastructure as code is breaking these changes into small, very, very minuscule units of work and putting them in a flow pattern. So if I need to make a change, I should be 100% confident that it will flow all the way through my systems. Very few companies have that confidence. Um, and that's really what's missing in this case, is this confidence that you can take an idea and deliver it, break into small pieces, and then if you need something to change or adjust something, that's where, that's lean manufacturing, where you can make that quick change and have it propagate. If you don't have 100% confidence about that, then your business is impinged in, in how well you can execute. Right. And what about security? Because, you know, in today's world, security is really becoming a very, very important topic for, for companies. They are concerned about security. Security is essential, and it, it's not an add-on thing. The mistake that people make is thinking they can add security into the process. Security is part of the process. And so everything I described is a secure process, because when you improve the security of your operations, it has to flow quickly through all of your operations. You're, you're not going to do that as a bolt-on process. It has to be integrated in. And so infrastructure as code has the potential to dramatically improve people's security posture by making sure that security improvements are automatically incorporated into the delivery of your product. Anything less is really a joke, frankly. Now, one more interesting thing is that despite all the talks about DevOps and you know Nimble and Agile teams, a lot of companies are still very siloed in their operation, which means that their teams are kind of, they work in uh, kind of isolation or they have very elaborate protocols to share. Shouldn't uh, there be more integrated handoffs between teams and kind of structured communication between them? So how does infrastructure as code solve this problem of breaking down these silos? So you're, you're right about DevOps as a philosophy, really trying to create a, this unified flow, right? It's the process and people side of that. The, and, and what I think one of the mistakes people make is they think that business silos are bad. It, the fact that that's, that companies have divided uh, spheres of control, network and compute and storage and administration, it's not bad. It's, it's a skills optimization question and it's an authority question. The thing that gets really broken is when one team can't or won't talk to another team and you create all these authority chains where, well, I can't make that network change for you because my boss has to sign off on it. This is where we start having the problems. And so what infrastructure as code does is it creates a standard way for teams to communicate across the flow of their organization. So what you're really trying to do is, is you, know, you want to take away the boundaries of the silos a bit, but you also want to make it so that when the network team takes an operation, they can deliver a very clear artifact to the storage team or the networking team or the compute team. Those infrastructure as code artifacts become things that everybody can see and ingest. And so the, the better you do with infrastructure as code as a business, the more you're able to have teams communicating in shared language and working together with shared artifacts. And that is, that's always been the goal for DevOps. And I think infrastructure as code done right actually creates that shared language of how you're communicating change and process throughout your organization. It's an incredibly powerful thing that people should be asking for um, from a business side. And, and infrastructure as code is just our, our way of saying, hey, I want you all to talk the same the same talk uh, so that you can hand off work more easily. Yeah, and since we are talking about some of these malpractices at uh, <laughs> infrastructure ones, one more thing is that uh, there is no place for manual process in modern infrastructure. It is very inefficient and ineffective. So how does infrastructure as code kind of embraces, endorses, or increases automation? So manual processes are really the, the breaking point for most organizations. Um, and what we've seen is that to, to eliminate manual process in this, and this is where security problems creep in and speed problems creep in and reproducibility problems, a lot of errors creep in when when people are configuring things or, or are involved in doing a manual operation. What, what we are doing with infrastructure as code is we're really looking for ways that we can wrap APIs and controls around those manual processes or eliminate the manual steps so that we can then automate the pieces end to end. What we like to call at rack end chained automation. So the idea here is that we can take our automation processes and continually review how can we eliminate a manual step, 
you know, change out a vendor, make, make something more flexible from an autonomy perspective. Um, all of those steps together have to function. And, and it's important to note, you, if you can't eliminate all manual processes, that doesn't mean you failed. What we're trying to do is get to a point where we have eliminated them. And that means we're constantly evolving and improving our, our innovation. A big part of infrastructure's code to me is abstraction boundaries. So you can say, you know what, this is a manual process, but I have an abstraction that allows me to one day replace it with something that could be automated or swap out a vendor or swap out a process. Those are all important pieces. So when we talk about eliminating manual processes, we're also creating the abstractions and freedoms to change out whole parts of my infrastructure as, as a process as I improve. And that continuous improvement is, is really as much a part of the game in, in getting things to improve from an infrastructure as code perspective. And, and that, that actually pulls us full circle back to lean and agile manufacturing. Right. Uh, last point, and, but it is a very important point when we're talking about, you know, business, you know, and infrastructure as code, which is cost, especially in this time of pandemic where companies are looking at cost cutting, they are not investing heavily. Uh, what about the cost factor here? So there, there are very definitive cost gains in infrastructure as code. A lot of it comes from being able to uh, leverage and then pull back infrastructure that you're using. So one of the, the goals for infrastructure as code is if I've made it cheap, fast, and, and accurate to create infrastructure, then I don't have to leave infrastructure lying around that I don't need to use anymore. If, if it's not in use, I can repurpose it. I could unassign it. I can bring it back. And that's a hugely powerful statement, right? This idea that I could actually take an asset that I have, a server or a cloud instance, and I can either stop paying for it or I can use it for another purpose confidently and quickly. And then when I need to switch around again, I could reuse it. Companies buy a lot more infrastructure than they need because they end up fixing its role and not being able to change it or adapt it. This totally changes the way you use infrastructure more efficiently. And that's a core infrastructure. That's a core value for how things go. But there's something else I think that's even more important than just saving money on infrastructure. And it really comes down to control and predictability. So what we see happening is a lot of companies can't make very good decisions about how they move forward and how they deliver because they aren't confident that if they have a good idea, code it, write an application, that they can deliver it in a, in a fast, repeatable way. And that leads to uncertainty. And so if you're not confident that your business can reliably deliver its own products, its own technology products into the field, then you are missing opportunities because you can't move, move confidently forward. You're always going to be looking over your shoulder. And so what we find is that the real cost for businesses is the fact that they don't trust their own infrastructure to deliver what they need without a lot of headaches or stress or downtime or risk. And eliminating that risk and allowing the business to focus on the business is actually a critical cost component for infrastructure as code. Rob, thank you so much for talking about the business side of infrastructure as code. And I look forward to talk to you again soon. Thank you. Swap, thank you. It's been a pleasure.